So we're here today because we have an opportunity to, to uh, celebrate what Vermont's about. I would like to introduce you to my most interesting friend, um, <laughs> who is known uh, in some circles as the most interesting man in the world. But Jonathan said that he would say some, some uh, few words, and uh, so I'd like to introduce you to Jonathan Goldsmith. <laughs> nice to be here, and thank you all for coming out. And in this interesting political year, the last thing I want to hear from anybody is political rhetoric. It's, I'm filled up as all of you must be. It's just unbelievable. I'm not interested in skilled politicians. I am interested in supporting a skilled human being. And that's my friend and yours, Steve Barry. I really do mean that. Barbara and I moved here about uh, almost six and a half years ago and we met Steve and Carol shortly thereafter. We became very, very good friends. And they say, uh, honorable, in front of the title that Steve has as a, in the legislature. Steve is the most ethical, honorable person that I have ever met. As a representative in the Vermont legislature, Steve is aligned with issues and causes that impact the lives of Vermonters every day. I don't like to listen to what people say. I like to see what they do. Steve is a doer. He comes from a place of service. He has been giving of himself, his time, his energy, and his intellect for all of his life. Steve worked for the rights of individual and the building up of community his entire career, beginning up in the rural area in the kingdom, working with the poor people many years ago. He has worked, the kingdom I'm referring to, excuse me, Reverend, is the Northeast Kingdom. <laughs> he also worked with all types of people, rich and poor, black, white, gay, straight, makes no difference. Worked with everybody. He's a documentarian, but it's all about giving back, coming from a place of service. Steve will be the first to tell you that the best leaders are always first and foremost the best servants. Steve has served all of his life. Almost 30 years ago, he set in motion a soup kitchen in St. Louis that is still operable today, feeding the needy and giving comfort to that community. I wrote down that Steve is a very good listener. In my own life, I have had some problems from time to time. Nobody, nobody ever gave me better advice or more help, more caring, loving help than my friend Steve. And I'm asking you to support this noble man. He's a great guy. He's done wonderful things for Vermont. And even the Republicans I know like him. So thank you very much. We have to lift up the lives of the people who generally are forgotten. And, um, and that's what I've been doing most of my life. So I'm, I'm very interested in continuing that. And it's different working one-on-one -on -one with a person. But when you legislate that, when you see that a person can get um, and I'll use the example for Habitat for Humanity. Uh, when you see a person who doesn't have a home, and you have just a slate, clean slate, and then you come up with a design, and then you raise money, and then you see something built, and people work on it together in a community, and then, and then the next thing you know that you're stepping, you're stepping back, and you're, you're seeing something that you had to particip you participated in, and with the tears streaming down their face, they are walking into a new life, not only for themselves, but for their families forever. So when I work toward, for example, just simple things like affordable housing or weatherization, these are the people that I already know. I know them because I've worked with them before. I've seen how their lives can be changed. And that's the reason why I'm, I'm interested in doing this. Because policy-wise, once you get into the weeds here, you can really do some things for people and lift up their lives give them a whole new opportunity to have, have real value in themselves where otherwise they might not have valued themselves at all. And there's a spiritual side to all of that. Uh, there, it doesn't matter what, what your religion is. What does matter is that you, that you have a human heart, a compassionate, loving heart, and want to do the best with your life, not only for yourself, but for somebody else. And, and that's what politics should be about, in my estimation, at least in part, to remember that this is a job that is very important to some people who otherwise would never have a voice. 
and help them out and lift them up. And that's why I, I do this. It's really important to me. And then Steve said uh, that he spent most of his life working with people. And then we got him elected and sent him to Montpelier. <laughs> <laughs> to work with a different kind of people, politicians. Uh, Steve has done very well in his first term. I told him the first year, don't say anything. Just listen and see what's going on around you, and then speak up. And unbeknownst to him, he's learning it here for the first time. I check. I have friends. I call. How's my guy doing? He's doing great. He's doing great. And every time I would call friends and ask how my friend Steve is doing, the reports were even better. Wow, he sure is thoughtful. Boy, he sure is smart. Smarter than me when I had the seat. Um, all of the feedback was not unexpected, and it was certainly good. So I thought I would share that with you. People seem to like you. Bob really does know the inside. He's been a lot, uh, spent a lot of time in Montpelier. He knows a lot of the players. He's been there on the floor uh, as a uh, state representative. He also has been behind the scenes and uh, done a lot of really good work. Uh, Jerry and, and Pat Carr came to church when I was a pastor in, uh, in Manchester and uh, introduced themselves and um, came to the line and, and Pat said, I'm, a, I'm an artist. And I said, well, my wife's an artist, and you should meet her. And that has started a, a really nice friendship that uh, has taken us around. So I'm going to ask Jerry to come up and, and share a, a, few, a few thoughts uh, today. Well, I'm an engineer and a former astronaut, and now I'm an artiste <laughs> because I met my wife and got interested in art. And so my uh, final career is that of being an, an artist. Uh, we've been friends with uh, Steve and, and uh, uh, Carol for quite some time. And uh, we spend a lot of time around the dinner table. Uh, we we kind of correspond. We, we resonate on fair, several different levels. Uh, we do spiritually, uh, environmentally, artistically, and in the kitchen. Well, uh, Steve being a theologian in, in our group, is he has a lot to say about the spiritual implications of, of uh, what you can accomplish around the table. And uh, Steve has also mentioned uh, a friend of his, her name was Dorothy Day, and she is a, uh, a Catholic uh, uh, service worker uh, in, in the Bowery in New York City. Uh, he's quoted her several times to us, and here's, here's her quote, he, she says, here on this one small island in the universe, God has put so many of us to live. The earth is an island. Here we believe it would be better if we got to know one another better uh, to be part of a community over a table to serve and be served. Imagine what would happen to us if we ever lose the ozone layer. We would be fried. The earth would be like the moon and that would be the end of civilization, humans, and biology. So we certainly have a motivation uh, to take care of this atmosphere of, our, of ours, and that's another area that Steve's very, very uh, impressed with. It's, it's something he's, he's been fighting for for years, and that is that we learn how to live sustainably on this earth of ours, and that we have harmony, because the biggest polluters of the earth are two things, volcanoes and war. Imagine, if you will, how much pollution comes out of all those tanks that are roaring around out on the desert and all of the uh, other kinds of engines that are going on and the, the dust that's being blown up uh, by explosives. So really, the key here is if we can learn to live harmoniously with each other down here on the earth and we can put a stop to war, we're going to find ourselves in a, in a much better place. So if for no other reason, that's one reason to learn to live together in harmony. We actually need people who embrace uh, the idea that uh, uh, we really all ought to learn to live together. We need elected officials that uh, want to see captives release, and we have a lot of captives not only in prisons but in mental institutions and captives of culture, people who just can't think outside the box. We have prisoners of drugs and painkillers and that sort of thing. 
And uh, again, we have uh, people who are captives of their childhood experiences, the, the uh, tragic abuse and neglect that many of our children uh, suffer here in the United States, which is really hard to believe, but it's there and it can't be ignored. Well, I'm endorsing Steve Barry for public office because Steve knows how to live out uh, this vision of uh, people like Isaiah and Jesus and Black Elk and Gandhi and Schweitzer. He understands very well. He knows how to lead in ways that uh, uh, sets a forward-looking vision that if people will embrace it, will invariably lead to a better life and a better uh, earth for many. So Pat and I are here because we believe in the importance of a community. We believe the importance of a community over a meal, and I hope you've enjoyed your meal. I hope you'll join me in uh, embracing this vision together so that we can re-elect Steve Barry. Thank yeah. you. The founders of our nation called us to create a more perfect union. And we can only do that if we're conscious of how we live and work and act and how we deal with each other and how we care for each other. Jonathan mentioned that I started a soup kitchen years ago in St. Louis in 1982. It's been done, this soup kitchen, for 34 years, not by me. Millions of meals for people inviting, opening their doors so people can sit around the table and have a meal around the table. Table fellowship and food. Those are ordinary heroes. These are not people that are in the limelight. They're not getting any press. But every week they show up and they create and they make meals and somebody gets fed, not only with food, but also with good things of the spirit. A kind word, a thoughtful act. Black Elk observed that a person who has a vision is not able to use the power of it until after he has performed the vision on earth for the people to see. For me, primarily being a legislator is performing a vision that people can see that hopefully will benefit them and those who come after them. It is different work than making a soup kitchen or making a film or a piece of art or doing experiments in outer space or making a meal, or being hospitable. But whatever we do, it can be an expression of humanness that people can see and be blessed by. I really can only do very little on my own, but with you and with your help, we can do together good things so that the world can be blessed.